Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is NecroStevo and it's time for week one of the Lithio Battle Association. So if you haven't seen the team builder for this week, uh, you can definitely go check that out in the team analysis video for the matchup against the Chicago Grand Bulls coached by Nova Hawk. And I will leave his Twitter in the description in case you're interested in seeing his Twitter maybe challenging him. Of course, just a brief overview. We did end up um, at the very, very, very last minute. I was able to breed the right head smash Archaeops for this battle. Just lead Sash with Taunt, Stealth Rock, Head Smash, and Acrobatics. Um, and of course, we have the especially offensive Dragonite. Good amount of bulk in there with just enough to outspeed uh, some of the Pokemon that they actually didn't end up bringing, so that ended up mattering. Um, but he was my main primary switch into Entei. We went with Swords Dance Aqua Jet for Alligator, just because, and I was very, very happy to see this matchup because he had three Pokemon that for Alligator could really muscle through. Uh, we went definitely with Choice Specs Whimsicott, the Air Balloon Cobalion for our general switch into uh, the Excadrill, especially if he is Scarfed. And um, the last Pokemon we had was Agility Porygon Z with Tri Attack, Thunderbolt, and Hyper Beam. And so the, the matchup, we decided to go just with Archaeops for the general lead here. It had a good matchup against every single one of his Pokemon except for maybe Excadrill uh, because the Archaeops that we brought can't really touch Excadrill and if he leads with it, it's probably Scarfed. Um, outside of that though, I get to get up rocks against anything. If he brings out something that's slower, I can taunt it. Probably don't want to stand against Sableye though, of course, just because Sableye can burn us right away. Uh, but anything else, fair game. So we're gonna hop right into the battle here. Be sure to leave a, a comment about what you think about the matchup or the battle video. And thank you so much for watching. We're actually heading into Valentine's Day here in the United States. So if you do have any fun plans coming up for this weekend, be sure to let me know. But in the meantime, for this battle, he does lead up with Sableye with Archaeops out. I expected the will was right off the bat. And so I decided to go out into Whimsicott, whom I did not care if Whimsicott got burned. Uh, he does go immediately for Will-O-Wisp, which is okay. Whimsicott just has specs, and right here at the beginning of the game, we're gonna start making some plays. I figured Venusaur would be coming in because the Moonblast is so obvious, and that is exactly what happens. So we get to get off a specs Psychic on Venusaur, which is amazing. Look at that damage. Without the bulk from the Mega Evolution, Venusaur can't take two of those. Now, I am expecting either Whimsicott to come um, back. I'm sorry, I'm expecting Sableye to come back or uh, he might even go into his Entei. I really, really wanted to stay in there and click Psychic again in case he went out to Entei because I would have loved that extra damage on Entei. Uh, he hits Sacred Fire on my Dragonite and immediately gets the burn. So we're gonna see a little bit of burn damage here. Um, I just went for a Roost hoping to scout for Stone Edge to see if he had it. I was really hoping he would use that first, but I guess it makes a lot more sense to keep on going for Sacred Fire until you do pick up the burn. Unfortunately, I miss my hurricane as he subs up. This is terrible because all that momentum I got from breaking the switch to Venusaur is now gone. Uh, granted, that's what I get for running hurricane. And uh, if I didn't want to miss a thing, I would definitely be running uh, wing attack or something like that. But Stone Edge definitely rocks Dragonite's world, unfortunately. I just go for Dragon Pulse here and not wanting to switch anything into the Stone Edge or the possible Sacred Fire if he tries to predict the switch. And I just wanted to break his sub. I didn't want to get out of this matchup with him with a substitute up, and of course he's getting leftovers recovery too, which would be no good. Um, so at this point of HP, I really can't save Dragonite. Um, I could save it, I guess, but it's just death fodder, and there's a good chance that he's going to get up rocks or something with the burn. It's going to be hard to come back in at Roost, just a lot of annoying factors there, but I still have Sash on Archaeops, which is really nice. Head Smash destroys Entei, and that was the main reason of putting Head Smash on Archaeops over something like Stone Edge or Rock Slide. Even if he had a bulkier Entei like it looked like he had, Head Smash does some good damage. Now unfortunately the um, the recoil knocks me into defeatist range, so I won't really be able to touch Excadrill. I was really close to going for Taunt here, just because I didn't want him to get his rocks up. But uh, I, since he did go four rocks after that, I just went for Taunt to stop him from doing anything weird like Substitute or even Swords Dancing. I didn't want to see any of those types of moves here. So I am going to go out into Cobalion, and right here we have a pivotal point in this battle because I go for Volt Switch thinking that he saw my Air Balloon. 
and that he would switch out, but he didn't see the air balloon, and so he just went for Earthquake. And I could have just close combated him in the face. Uh, that sucked. Because now, he he gets to rapid spin, remove my entry hazards, which I can no longer get back up, and um, he also pops my balloon. I just went for close combat again. I figured that Venusaur might come in, but after a close combat, an Iron Head should be able to take him out unless he is max defense. Then there's a roll on whether or not an Iron Head will take him out. Cobalion has pretty, he has above average attack. It's nothing to really um, write home and tell your, your mom about as she's collecting money for you for your, your bank account. But you know, it's enough to finish the deal here against Venusaur. So that is fantastic. I am expecting another Will-O-Wisp from Sableye but I don't want to switch into Whimsicott just in case he goes for a coverage move. So we go out into Porygon Z instead. And he actually goes out into his Excadrill, which I thought was an interesting move. If I just stayed in and went for the Iron Head to hit the Sableye and do some damage, that would have done a decent chunk. Um, I'm actually really surprised here to see him pick up the knockout on my Porygon, since we know that he does not have a Life Orb. So we might have uh, maybe the the ground type play or the soft sand to boost the power of ground type moves. I didn't expect to be knocked out there, is the point. But I do know I can come in here and threaten him. Even if he goes into Slowbro, I can just Volt Switch right out, which will give me an idea of what set Slowbro has too. And Slowbro does come in, but that's okay. Uh, I do take some Rocky Helmet damage, which was not good. That, that little extra damage is going to come into play later. We just Volt Switch out here and seeing the damage that that Volt Switch does, I definitely thought that Whimsicott could take him out in one hit with a Specs Energy Ball. Uh, he does go for Slack Off to get back up to full HP, but looking at the damage, I figured, oh, he's obviously more physically defensive because he didn't take a Volt Switch from a jolly uninvested Cobalion that well, but he barely lives and allowing that Excadrill to spin earlier, or rather, um, just him, I don't know, I, it worked out in his favor because if the Stealth Rocks were up there, I, I even though he would have gotten the slack off, he may not have gotten back up to full HP, is my point. So that was really, really important. Uh, really unfortunate to lose Whimsicott in that way, because I, I did threaten everything he had left. And his Terrakian, unless it had Iron Head, couldn't really touch my Whimsicott, which, based on how he prepared for this, I'm assuming he had Iron Head. Uh, but that's okay. We're going to go out into Feraligator on the, um, the Volt Switch here. He brings out his Sableye. I knew he was going to burn me, but that's okay. I'm just going to go for two Swords Dance. Uh, here the first one to mitigate the burn and the second one to get back up to plus two basically Now he does surprise me. I figured that he would have knockoff So I saw that coming but I had already calced it even after losing my life orb I could still knock out all of his remaining Pokemon without my life orb and I had enough HP to live to take out Sableye Terrakian and Slowbro, but unfortunately he has shadow sneak which knocks me into just the perfect range so that I only get off one more attack after burn. So that is really unfortunate because otherwise I would have been able to take out Excadrill. And then I could have either taken, and then I would have been able to take out Terrakian with an Aqua Jet at plus two. Uh, but with this, this means we're down to a speed tie between Cobalion and Terrakian. And that's assuming that his Terrakian isn't Scarf. He also got rid of my rocks. So if uh, his Terrakian was Focus Sash, then I'd be in the SOL territory there as well. But it turns out that he is Scarf, he did tell me that after the battle. And so that means that there was no coin flip there, which I kind of prefer, I guess I like to know that it wasn't a 50-50 shot. I, I really, really felt good about this game because I felt like I played pretty decently for my first battle in the LBA. And um, Novahawk just prepared so well. He was telling me about some of his sets uh, putting extra special defense onto Cobalion, um, into, excuse me, extra special defense onto Slowbro, and to Entei, expecting more especially oriented Pokemon, and recognizing the weakness that uh, Whimsicott posed for his team. So, very, very good battle there. I did lose 1-0, but that's okay. If you're going to lose, you want it to be a close, excellent battle, so I couldn't have asked for better. So guys, be sure you go check out Novahawk. Thank you to Aiden, of course, for the co-coaching as usual. And I look forward to the next battle match. I will be going up against Skyrander, which if you don't know who Skyrander is, you will find out. One of, just like Novahawk, just someone, a pleasure to battle against, a pleasure to talk to on Twitter. He has his own YouTube channel too, so you will be seeing links to that in the future. 
And in the meantime, have a fantastic weekend. And I will talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.